Tron and BitTorrent watching that Bitcoin supply shock be shocking. How's it going to affect them? So before I get into it, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for watching. Help us support the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell. It helps with the algorithm, helps the channel become more popular, and it's a nice way for you to thank me for supplying some value, and I do appreciate it very much. So, with that being said, Bitcoin Analyst says supply shock underway as BTC withdrawal rate spikes to a one-year high. The supply shock is being unnoticed, similar to Q4 2020, before the price of Bitcoin skyrocketed, says Willy Wu. So, he's implying good stuff's about to happen, the northern skies are about to fly. As Bitcoin BTC continues trading sideways inside the 30 to 40,000 range, new data is emerging about the potential for a bullish breakout. Hit the bell, subscribe, and thumb up if you think that Bitcoin is on its way up and going to drag everything else up too. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. I like to interact with you and I want to see what your opinions are and we can go back and forth and go over some Interesting and unique viewpoints. Is Bitcoin silently readying for a breakout like in Q4 2020? So, Willy Wu, an on chain analyst, anticipates a potential supply shock in the Bitcoin market as long term holders continued raking BTC supply from short term ones. Wu stated in this Friday newsletter that the process might push more Bitcoin out of circulation. You know, the truth of the matter is, and everybody complains a lot, and nobody likes to wait, and I understand that, but think of it this way. If you were holding a large amount of money that you had invested, and in this particular case, Bitcoin did a wild dance the past, you know, um, few months, and you saw it within a six-month span basically double, what would you do? It would be hard for you to not sell. So because of these unexpected variables, meaning that when the price shoots and at a time where, you know, a lot of investors have been sitting there with their money tied up, of course there's going to be a circulation of selling. And of course there's going to be some selling pressure because people are going to want to take profits, right? That's what they're here for. They're not here to put their money away and forget about it. It's one thing to hodl, and there's a time to hodl, and there's a time not to hodl, but when most people are up, you know, big, meaning they've doubled their money, or more in some cases, they want to sell. And if they don't sell 100%, they certainly want to take some profits. And not everybody does it at the exact same moment in time based on their entry points, their positions, their, their trading positions. So the point I'm trying to make is that whenever there's wild ups, there's going to be some, some earthquakey downs that make some adjustments. And that's going to ring true um, with BTC. It's going to ring true with Tron and BitTorrent when they eventually fly, which they will. The key here is with BitTorrent and Tron, like I've been saying for a very, very long time, you got to be patient. Definitely, in my opinion, not investment advice. You have two coins here that are going to be um, big profit for people that buy at the prices we're sitting at right now. I do think, and I've said it before in other videos, but I'll just say very quickly, I see a Tron at a buck in a couple years, and I see in that time frame a BitTorrent sitting at about 25 cents. Now, um, the analyst referred to the ratio of Bitcoin held by strong hands versus weak hands, also known as Bitcoin supply ratio, noting that the former is actively absorbing selling pressure from whales who have been dumping their crypto holdings since February. By the way, Cointelegraph is the source. I always share the source, and obviously I do that so that you can go there and look in detail, go over the article, read it yourself. Um, it reminds me of the supply shock that went by unnoticed by the market. In Q4 2020, wrote Wu, pundits were debating whether BTC was an inflation hedge in a post-COVID world when the data was pointing to a long-term investor stacking BTC at a fast pace. That didn't read right. BTC was an inflation hedge in a post-COVID world when the data was pointing to long-term investors stacking BTC at a fast pace. It reads right. I didn't read it right. The price subsequently went on a tear very quickly, decoupling from its tight correlation with stocks. New active users rising. Glassnode, another on-chain data analytics service, 
also boosted Bitcoin's booming adoption processes. The portal revealed that the Bitcoin network has been onboarding an average of 32,000 new users every single day, which is a new high for 2021. We've got a graph here, which we don't do graphs on this channel. There's many channels that do graphs. However, it's here. You can go look at it and go over it on Cointelegraph. That's where the article is sitting. Um, so the Bitcoin network user growth metric last topped in January 2018, hitting approximately 40,000. So before correcting lower alongside the prices, it showed that the new users stopped coming to the Bitcoin network as its price crashed from the 20,000 top in January 2018 to as low as 3,200 in September 2020. And you know, you always look at this, you'll say, well, I wish I bought that, I wish I bought that. It doesn't matter when you buy, as long as you buy at a time that ends up putting you on top in the end because where you sell is at a higher price than where you bought. This is not the structure we are experiencing right now, explained Wu. New users are taking the opportunity to buy the dip. They're coming in at the highest rate seen in 2021. And you know, the market has shown you with cryptocurrencies, you're better off to, in most cases, just hold and chill out. Unless it's a coin like um, Dogecoin that you're not expecting Doge to do what it did. Nobody was. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody was expecting really very small amount of people, and nobody knows for sure um, what's going to happen. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, with if you're holding something that goes from, you know, four cents to 60 or 70 cents, say goodbye if it does it in a short period of time, because it's very rare that something will move that quickly over a short period of time and hold. So if it does that, and you're looking at like a 70 cent gain or a 60 cent gain, for Pete's sake, if it's life-changing money for you, sell. Because chances are you'll be able to buy back in again um, at as low a price or not too much higher than where you were originally. And then you can ride that wave again if you believe in that cryptocurrency. Anyway, Bitcoin is currently stuck below 34000 at publishing time. Um, what I was trying to say is with most, though, it's better to, if it's a coin that has utility and makes sense, you're better holding over the long term. You'll make more and have that uh, bump up be a good one before you sell instead of just trying to make pennies and sell and go back in. Meanwhile, uh, Petr Kozyakov, co-founder and CEO of crypto-enabled payment network uh, Mercurio, believes that Ether may steal the limelight from Bitcoin in the near term as London hard fork uh, approaches. The proposed launch of the London hard fork upgrade and the ultimate migration to Ethereum 2.0 is helping to renew investors' confidence, he added. Once the hype settles, Bitcoin could move up to 50000 in the short to medium term perspective. As I've been saying, I believe thirty to 45000 is where uh, Bitcoin is going to trade for the remainder of the year 2021. The proposed launch of the London hard fork upgrade and okay, so we did that. So Bitcoin withdrawal transactions hit a one year high. So this is also interesting. And of course, like I said, five minutes ago or so, of course, there's going to be a lot of trading and selling because people made a lot of money. They want the money. Data analytics from CryptoQuant reported earlier, you have to think of it as like a merry-go-round. You know, people have to get off, they get dizzy, <laughs> and then they, new people get back on and the merry-go-round still continues to thrill, but it takes time, it's a process. So, data clinics from CryptoQuant reported earlier Tuesday that Bitcoin's net outflow transaction count from spot exchanges crossed the 60,000 mark. For the first time in a year. Meanwhile, the total number of Bitcoin deposits to spot exchanges uh, wallets decreased to below 20,000. So you have some more graphs here you can go check out. The BTC withdrawal rate jumped in the period that also saw regulators increasing their scrutiny over cryptocurrency trading platforms. So the regulating, you know, is going to cause some short-term pain. You see how Binance is getting slammed. All these things affect trading, affect the ease of, of money flow. Um, for instance, the United Kingdom Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, has banned Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by volume, from operating regulated activity in the country without the prior written consent. On Monday, Barclays notified its clients that they could no longer transfer, so this was some days ago now, uh, last week, uh, they could no longer transfer funds to Binance, citing the FCA's order. However, the London-based bank said clients 
could withdraw funds from Binance to their banking accounts. Earlier on Tuesday, so that's good, they could take their money out that way. Earlier on Tuesday, the People's Bank of China also took action against a local company for allegedly trading cryptocurrencies on the side of their regular business activities. Very good article, guys. You should check it out. Cointelegraph, very important points being made. And this concludes, Bitcoin anal analyst says supply shock underway as BTC withdrawal rate spikes to a one-year high. As usual, thank you for watching. I hope this finds you healthy, happy. I will see you on the next video.